Hi everyone, welcome to the IoT Hero Show, my weekly showcase of thought leadership on the Internet of Things. My name is Tom Raftery, I'm the Global IoT Evangelist for SAP, and now, on with the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the IoT Hero Show. Uh, we're here with Alvira. Alvira, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Alvira Wallace and I'm running a unit called Smart Connected Business and we're dealing with IoT scenarios, for example, around the edge. So, what, what do you mean by around the edge? What is that? Well, one of the things that's really striking about IoT is people are starting to realize that a lot of data, more and more amounts of data, up to petabytes of data, occur and they, it occurs frequently. So it becomes paramount to handle the data where it occurs, at the device, basically where the occurrence of the event happens. And we call that the edge, so to say, really right there, out there on the cliff where the data occurs. Okay, and why out there? Why not bring it back to base? Well, there's several reasons, and it really depends on people's use case. One of them is, if you have large amounts of data, frankly, only some of it is relevant. So why not filter out the irrelevant data, the one that you're not so interested in, and only deal with the relevant data back at base or back in the cloud. So you filter out at the edge the data that is of lesser interest or of lesser importance, and basically um, thus transmit less data to the cloud. You require less storage in the cloud, and frankly, you deal with the data that's interesting. Another case where it really matters is there are use cases where latency is not an option. If you're dealing for example, with cranes in a construction site, and let's say each crane is an edge node, then you don't want to call home to base first, may I turn, to avoid a collision. Sure. You want to handle that issue if there's potentially a collision risk right there where the data occurs. Okay. And another one is, of course, um, transmission costs. Why should you transmit a lot of, frankly, relatively boring data? Why shouldn't you just transmit the ones that matters, the data that matters? And it really comes down to the use case, but I would say um, it's either cost of transmission or it's latency that you want to avoid, um, or it's really filtering and focusing on the really relevant data. And another one, frankly, is sometimes intermittent connectivity. You have places that are remote, uh, it might be an oil rig, it might be a mine, where transmitting is not an option. So you need to be relatively autonomous, relatively self-reliant, and then processing data, handling at the data, intelligence at the data, of course, all steered by the cloud, needs to happen. Okay, and what are the challenges with doing the computing at the edge? Well, one of it is um, really how do you make sure the intelligence is prevalent at the edge, and this is where it comes back to the cloud. We like to call it cloud-led edge. So you need to understand about the algorithms for processing data, um, about rules for filtering data, and you need to have that intelligence from um, the base, as you like to call it, or from the cloud, and you basically push it out to the edge where it then is executed yet it's not a complete autonomy in the sense of there is some edge that could go rogue and base or cloud never finds out about it. So clearly it's an interplay between the centralized cloud computing and the decentralized edge computing where we smarten up the edge sufficiently such that really um, whatever can be processed at the edge happens there. And I can give you um, an example from say, um, let's manufacturing. Okay. Classically speaking, um, what happens very often in, in manufacturing is uh, you run something, let's say uh, a recipe for um, some pharmaceuticals or some paint job in auto, uh, in auto manufacturing. And after the fact, um, you do quality assurance. You check, was every pill the same uh, formula, which you absolutely want to make sure, right? Yeah, if it's supposed to be. Yeah. Or was the paint job for every car the same? Well, doing it after the fact means post-processing. It means basically very often batch processing. Wouldn't it be great? if during production you could find out, am I on track? So by processing at the edge, right where the data occurs on the manufacturing street, um, and finding out, do I have a quality issue? Am I on track with producing more of the same with exactly the same formula? That's basically intelligence at the edge. Right, and how do you decide which data to keep at the edge and which to send back to the cloud? It's, um, it's also a question of timing. What we see with a lot of customers is initially when they go about their scenarios, they tend to keep more data. And over time, there's learnings in terms of what is really uh, relevant and what's not so relevant. Let me give you an example. If you're dealing with um, a cooler or if you're dealing um, with 
some uh, perishable goods and you set a certain temperature in Fahrenheit or Celsius, and if the temperature is okay, frankly, you don't want to signal to base or cloud all the time, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. That's frankly not so relevant. What you want to know is, I'm not okay, but what we tell our customers and what customers very often tell us, initially, they want to see the whole range of data, even the relevant one. Over time, they get more confident in their findings, they learn, and that then helps them filter out what they truly think is relevant and what isn't. Okay, great. Elvira, if people want to know more about the edge and how to go about it and what to do, where should they go? Well, one option is go to Google and, look, uh, and Google for SAP um, Edge services and you'll get to our website. There's a really great white paper which also looks at the industry perspective uh, for the Edge. Definitely on SAP.com if you look for Edge services and Edge computing, there's a large uh, set of resources. Also we're part of a number of the industry consortia. We're just publishing a great white paper um, that I'd recommend to people as part of uh, us being a member of the industry consortia. And, um, I think that's a good starting point. Also, clearly, um, we have online demos that we can provide, so you, there's nothing uh, like a look and feel of what it really is, isn't sure. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we do have great customer testimonials that can share, these customers can share um, what they've done at the edge and also what savings or what insights have they gained um, by doing so. And where are those testimonials available? Again, on sap.com. That's the source of all goodness. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Alvira, that's been great. Thanks a million for coming on the show. Thank you.